episode one. Yeah, man, it's been a long time coming. I'm guessing I couldn't find a jingle that doesn't make me sound like I'm running a country music radio station. <laughs> made it <laughs> we made it sunday afternoon we're here i'm tired but i'm happy to be here <laughs> i'm tired i'm tired eh? um, it's been a bit of a long week but i'm glad that we um i've got a bit of a cold fighting a bit of a cold yeah yeah don't feel sorry for me though <laughs> um just a gruffer voice yeah it's nice slightly deeper vo- oh thanks man thank you soothing <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so what we, uh, how are you, man? Yeah, good. Very good. Started doing a podcast. Yeah. Uh, I, we were, we've been talking about it for, what, six months? I mean... I'd say it maybe a bit longer than that. Really? Yeah. That is a hell of a long time. Just like, well, we can get on and talk. Yeah, like, just chat, have a good time. See, this is the thing. It's like, we were talking about this earlier. Time just, I don't know, man, time just goes. Like, a year to to me is like six months in my brain you know yeah so six months is like just flown by i don't know if that makes any sense at all it's all about perception i think yeah but um no credit to you man like getting the studio put together because i did fuck all (laughs) like let's be real (laughs) (laughs) this is very much like (laughs) this is you this is all you i'm okay with that yeah man but um I'm yeah this is awesome so this is like episode one and we'll what are we going to be talking about so like we said in the intro so we're talking about first of all the oh. token we're talking about is uh the rise of murder and crime documentaries on netflix and how oh, netflix, wow. netflix have kind of they've kind of cornered the market in terms of um you know the the genre sure they've they've, they've kind of been they are now Netflix is synonymous with um, these kinds of. Uh, oh, dude! There's a whole, there's a whole um, section on it. Yeah, there's a the, the below ne- action films critically acclaimed. <laughs> this is action films <laughs> critically acclaimed <sighs> action films, and then just murder, yeah, literally just murder. crime. Um, I, f- I feel like I guess. You know, we say this that it's it's not a it's not a, not a new phenomenon. No, right? it's it's been um, it's been going a long time. Murder documentaries. It's just that they. But I know what you. I know what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, for sure. They're a different type, and I I don't want to I don't want to get it muddled up. Like Netflix, they don't produce all of these, but I think they. Yeah, I think they they, just they're, they're the credit. ones. Yeah, they they're, <laughs> they're just they just got they've got the eye for it. I think I think they've just they, yeah. someone someone there's just you know. Um, looking at these production companies and thinking, oh, yeah, we'll take we'll take that on, you know. Yeah. Um, looking at, I mean, any and all, it seems all American crime. I mean, like for me, you know, making a murderer. Yeah. Like I think everyone's seen that, or most people have seen it, and that was like, that was probably not even large. the first. That wasn't the first, no, but no, that of course. was certainly like the one that kind of. It was known, you know, it was a Netflix documentary, but for me, I, I don't, I like, it's bad, you know, because I actually, um, you know, I'm pursuing acting, but I don't watch anything. I, that's yeah. terrible. I need to start watch, I find that, watching actually. more, more things, you know, more shows. Um, I actually, I haven't even seen Game of Thrones. Ooh. I just put it out there. <laughs> Those, yeah, we're like minutes it. in. I and, know, <laughs> and I've just dropped that scrutiny. Is yeah, coming. I know, but um, I mean, I've seen like a couple of episodes, and yeah. like I know it's really good. I'm just so fucking far behind. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going off it's, topic. That's all right. It's uh, with with these. You know, it doesn't. It feels like with uh, with these Netflix documentaries that uh, it doesn't have to be just a high profile crime. Mm. It, like no. it doesn't have to just be like Ted Bundy. Yeah. No, Jay Simpson. But Even bro, though, like, yeah, my point, my point was like making a murderer for yeah. me was the was the pinnacle. a one show, like the one show that I was I watched. I watched every episode. I was hooked on it. Mm. I loved it. And I know it's someone's life. You know, it's someone's fucking life. But mm. 
Fuck, it's, it's good TV. It is good TV. <laughs> and here's the thing with it, you know, it's kind of, it is a dramatization, but, it's, yeah. but it's, it is obviously I don't know that they need, fact. Yeah. I don't know that they need 10 episodes, you no. know? I mean, six. do they need 10 episodes to, you know, to like kind of explain everything like mm. i feel like they like you said they kind of make it a bit more dramatic like yeah. it's a tv show it needs dragging to be, out evidence yeah they drag it out yeah is a big yeah. trope in these uh, yeah in these documentaries I feel. yeah but i mean it's unbelievable really i know we're a bit late to it i mean season two came out like not too long ago mm. and i thoroughly enjoyed that as yeah. well um kathleen kennedy she's pretty incredible I, th- I enjoyed it, like, watching her kind of investigation, but, yeah, man, that's fucked up, like, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, the whole thing is fucked up. I feel like with Making a Merger, what we're talking about is um, the fact that it's kind of stranger than fiction, so it keeps people on tender hooks. Mm. you know, it's it's had so many twists that you're thinking yeah. to yourself, how is this real? Yeah. You can't um, fucking make this shit up. Yeah, no, it's insane. I think that's. Um, I mean, I feel like, um, you know, there's two kind of parts to the attraction. I feel like it's we're obsessed with these documentaries because you know not everyone wants to commit murder. <laughs> you yeah. know, no one. You're not really? gonna. You're not not, not gonna experience. I think everyone these. secretly wants to commit murder. <laughs> you're not gonna. You're I not do. gonna experience this. Um, you know, so it's it's easy to kind of look through the looking glass kind of thing. Yeah. But then on the, the on the other side, the thing that's making it so attractive is because you know it's so strange that these stories happen. I know. In everyday life. I, know. Light, I but... know. Yeah. I mean, and like particularly with making a murder, it's just such an unusual Story. case. Yeah. Like the fact that he was in prison for I think eighteen years. Mm. And then came out of prison and then, you know, you kind of went back in. It's yeah. just like, yeah, it's crazy. And I um, mean, it's really fucked up, like, what happened. But who knows, like, what happened? I think, person, do you, you saw the documentary. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah. So who do you think? Who do you think did it? I've, it's been I, a while since I've seen season two. Yeah, I think it was, um, I think it was, I think it's Stephen's nephew. No. Yeah, because yeah, you know they found like all kind of like weird shit on it, nightmare shit, like mm. on his laptop. Oh, okay. Like really twisted kind of shit. Yes. You know. I think his name's like Bobby Dassey or something. I don't know. Mm. Or Sorry. it was Brendan's. Brendan Dassey. Or it was Brendan's stepdad. I think it's his stepdad. Right. Who's with his mother. Um, had some sort of involvement but yeah it has been a while since I've seen it but um, yeah I'd, I'd be interested to know like what the latest is like you know because yeah. he's obviously he's not out of prison yeah, of course, yet yeah um, I'm sure I'm sure neither is uh, uh... Brendan which is crazy like they've been in jail since what 2006 I think yeah 2005 2006 which is insane hmm there's uh, going but back yeah, there's, to yeah, go on. Sorry, yeah. going back to what you said about you know uh, using drama, kind of elongating the um, the 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 series. You know, they're yeah. trying to get as many episodes out of it as possible. Yeah, I mean, um, at the time, I I was thankful for it, man. Mm. I was enjoying every episode. There is, I didn't want it to end. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't. You're yeah. like I could have uh, an episode on every bit. Of episodes. Yeah, um, but there there is there is one on Netflix. Um, yeah, what have you been watching? Uh, about the, uh, you know, I should have done a bit more research on this, even though I've seen the whole series. <laughs> um, <laughs> the one about um, about the nuns, about the sisters. The nuns? The, the, yeah, one gets killed. And here's the thing, some some of the series, I get to about episode four Those of like 12 nuns. or like 16, and I'm like, you've already given me all of the evidence and all like all of what's going to happen. You know, and mm. there's not going to be any more twists, but there's mm. still eight episodes. It's at that point I kind of lose interest. Yeah, yeah. When they they try and drag it out too much, I feel like ten episodes is good if you've got a lot of content. 
but like yeah. six is max man six is where, where it's got to be that's the Americans though man they love to drag our series out don't that's they? true compared to us when yeah. I'm like I need more than three episodes <laughs> yeah or four episodes yeah 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 I need to hit a sweet spot of like eight or something I need to watch um, I did start watching it but I I, I don't know I'm, like I said I'm terrible I just I, I have ADHD so I, I find I struggle to um, to sit and watch things yeah because um, I just get fucking distracted by nothing you know and um but the madeline mccann one oh that's like a, a that's a recent one did you see it yeah 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 was it good yes it's very good so and what do you think happened because there's so many theories so i believe madeline mccann was taken by um uh, a demon uh, i mean <laughs> <laughs> from a different I perspective laugh, like, I, yeah I shouldn't laugh. but the, uh, there's um I think there's two eyewitnesses that say that they saw a child being carried as if they were being taken to bed by a man on the street. Oh, God. Um, and one... Uh, so the the person described um, had tried to abduct, ab- abduct children uh, right. in the past, um, previous to her disappearance. So I feel... I don't... I, there's so many I crazy feels. I don't know. The parents didn't. There's do it. like one where they're like, the parents were conspiring with, you know, uh, I don't know, Portuguese people. government or something. Oh no! Like, <laughs> that, yeah, there was like, I don't know. They had a friend who was a paedophile, and they were like gonna give oh, I don't know. Madeline to him. I'm thinking what? again. This is like, this is their own daughter. No, th- these are stranger a- than these are. You know stories that are like so fantastical or well, you know stuff like that i don't know it's like they sold her or something like there's a theory where it's like these you know no they man, sold her know, no. but and i saw the opening i saw the first episode and it was like they i don't know they look like loving parents yeah. i don't really see the only thing that's really odd to me is um their actions maybe a year or maybe yeah, very recently afterwards, and then some public appearances. I'm a, I'm a little bit like. Oh, this How do you keep it up? Do you true. know what I mean? Yeah. How do you keep it up with? I mean, when did when did this happen? This is like over ten years ago, is it? Surely. Yeah, two thousand seven. Really? Oh wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, how do you keep that up? You know, if that's if it's not the truth. True. I don't know. Who knows? It's a mystery. Like. Oh, there was another theory. It's like because obviously they're. I think they're both doctors, right? Yes. Uh, definitely Jerry is. Yeah, and um, Jerry. Jerry. Um, apparently, like, like they gave her. I don't know, some sort of medication to get her to sleep. Yeah. And they accidentally gave her too much. Accidentally and killed. And they her. accidentally killed her, and then they tried to cover it up. I don't know. Who knows? Will mm. we ever know? Probably not, I don't think. I, Ten years I hope past. so. I hope, you know, I hope we find out, at least for um, Madeline's sake, you know, like, I hope maybe she's alive, I don't know. Who knows? What about the uh, O.J. Simpson? I never saw that. Dramatization I mean, that's... with David Schwimmer. Oh, with David Schwimmer, with Ross. Again, I mean, I, I, I think I watched the first episode but a while ago now, but I've heard it, I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's a, it's a fantastic series. John Travolta is really good in it. Yeah. I mean, I love John Travolta. The only thing that kind of takes me out of it with that is Cuba Gooding Jr. does not look like O.J. Simpson. Like, even slightly. No. No. <laughs> I mean... Uh, I guess that does, it doesn't O.J. Simpson is built. Much. Yeah. He is He is built. He's built. Um, so, you know, having Cuba Gooding Jr., who we've seen play, uh, you know kind of average size people um, yeah yeah he's good though he's, yeah, he's a great actor yeah you know no doubt but literally one of the only things that kind of takes me out of the, the series is that looking at Cuba Gooding Jr. and spoke uh, you know having to kind of envisage OJ Simpson yeah. someone who's probably about a foot taller and about twice as wide <laughs> yeah um, yeah no I hear that no, no offence to QB and Junior, he's he's you know muscular built guy, but he's not lovely, OJ lo- built. <laughs> lovely and muscular man, he is. 
so yeah that's a great great documentary yeah recently he's kind of fallen off i think yeah i haven't really seen him in much at all not not playing many big roles what else you been watching man um so i just finished two two things on netflix um so i finished uh sex education finally i finished oh really yeah that's a a great um, uh, that's a great series my friend loves that series and i have a i actually ha- i have a friend in it oh yeah yeah shouts to simone ashley she's um my friend and i haven't seen her for, a, for quite a while but um she's in it i haven't seen it <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible it's terrible, um, it's terrible. Um, i don't um okay i need to watch it because yeah. i've heard it's good it's very good like i feel like the 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 cast because it's you know maybe roughly uh, the same age is um i'd say they're as as good as as the uh the ensemble of the cast of stranger things oh yeah wow i'd say they're they're on part statement but i don't think they'll get as much exposure because it's not a bit as a bigger series yeah and because it's again it's it's like a small set in uh, yeah britain it's kind um, of a weird looking school like, it's, it's what got, kind of school is that it's got um uh, my friend put it quite correctly it's, it's just england with some american high school vibes yeah I see i think that's vibes already that kind of turns me off a little bit yeah. if i'm honest yeah i don't know it's got it's, it's got not a, real is it like no, you no. don't have a school like that no. i mean maybe you do maybe i just don't know it's but... all filmed in wales right i for the sake of the people listening if anyone's listening please no <laughs> um i do a bit of acting on the side trying to pursue that it's kind of my thing it's not going well <laughs> 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 but i auditioned for it oh did you yeah for sex education. i auditioned for a while ago um i think he's a swimmer i, I yes think. I know, I, know the, I know the character Jackson is the name of the character. Right. Yeah. Didn't get the part. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get bitter. Is that why you haven't watched no, it? No, no, I'm not bitter. No, <laughs> no, no. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No. Yeah. But yeah. So, sex education. Also, uh, love, death, and robots. Which who's in that? So this is um, just a collection of shorts by netflix which is very uh in the style of uh the animatrix you know the sick which is uh yes a great um collection of manga i guess did you anime the animatrix is oh yeah i had it on dvd oh bro i need to watch that again Uh, that is so this one is a collection of shorts they range from comical to absolutely horrific like like horror (laughs) Oh really? Like yeah, from episode episode one and episode two have such a vast difference that you kind of get a feeling of what you're in for. I, I definitely recommend even just watching number one and number two. Um, I can't can't quite and what's remember. It called? Sorry, it's called uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, I think there's there's nearly it's fifteen fifteen short episodes. They're like fifteen minutes long, short stories. Awesome. Uh, some are hits and some are ferocious misses that are just really about the visual. Mm. And this, the the kind of the uh, the story kind of is on the back burner, wow. but there, a lot of them are just they're really good actually. Um, there's one, uh, so I'll tell you about episode one without spoiling it too much. Um, so there's uh, one uh, about the first episode is about three robots, um, vastly different looking, mm-hmm. that kind of um, are visiting Earth for a holiday, a uh, post apocalypse. So there's oh, like wow. no humans. Um, I don't know how long it's been. And uh, it's just their, their interaction with the world and, you know, questioning, you know, what humans did and it's, it's quite funny. And then a bit of a bit of a shot reveal at the end. So it's nice, nice to kind of, um, it's like a, I like stories that are kind of packaged well in a short space of yeah. time. Obviously, I love Good series. pacing. Yeah, but if, if you can tell a, a quite a unique story in 15 minutes, I quite... I quite admire it. Yeah. Because it's hard. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And these ones are quite good. Speaking mostly. of post-apocalyptic Oof. future. Oh, yeah. Terminator 2 was on the TV the other day. Oh, yeah. T- ITV2. <laughs> ITV4. Oh, nearly. They missed, they missed a trick there. Oh, did they? Yeah. It oh, should have been ITV2 on. were playing ITV2 The Mummy T- Returns, T2. obviously. Yeah, or American Pie. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're... But um, 
fucking hell. What a film. What a Terminator film. 2. I love that film so much. I haven't seen it in a while. And How does it hold up? Dude, it it holds up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like... That was a... That's almost some of the heresy CGI, there, I think. <laughs> yeah. Some of the CGI is like... A, well, it's a bit dated. The, um, you know, the bad, the bad guy or whatever, the liquid metal guy. Yes. You know, looks a bit silly, but when you're in it, when you're watching it, it doesn't matter because it's a really, really good film. It's 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 more than just an action film. I think a lot of people um, are put off by the fact that it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger action film, but it's it's such a great story, man. I love it so much. It's mm. so good, and the action is amazing, and Arnie's amazing. It is like, and it's so nineties, yeah. early nineties, and I love it. You know, with that with that Guns and Roses. Oh man. <laughs> Love it. It's awesome. It's um, awesome film. It is like one long kind of chase. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that's exactly what again, it is. Again, film films like that are, are great. Like um I don't know if you've seen Mad Max Fury Road. The most recent Mad Max. I haven't seen it. I've heard it's really, really good. I've I, heard that it is yeah, just one I big s- chase. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw it in IMAX and you know, I'm getting out of the the seat. I'm getting out of the seat sweaty because it's it's so intense you know and really it's it basically is obviously with that kind of one long chasing it's just you know you're on edge the whole time you have two and a half hours where you were you know yeah you're just trying to it's just an experience it's Mm. just it's fantastic i love i love films like that are they doing a sequel um i'm not quite sure be hard to it was hard to film the that one really yeah it's all it's majority practical obviously except for there's a there's like a storm in it that's not, that's not going to be practical it's going to be cgi but a lot right. of the a lot of the drug like the majority i would say you know 90 plus percent of the driving is um is all practical and you know films like that are hard and expensive now so yeah they don't they don't do enough practical these days i feel like no i mean green screen yeah i think i don't know maybe it's it will come back around i think maybe it is coming back around but i feel like you can tell more now than you used to that something is is green screen yeah i don't know it's like things kind of look out of place sometimes even nowadays like some you know i saw a video on it recently it's like is cgi it's like entitled is cgi getting worse and it's like some films the cgi is so phenomenal that you're really in it and you're watching and, and it's great. But then other films, you know, it just looks terrible. And it's like, oh, and it's so unnecessary. And it's like, you could have just used practical special effects, even though it looks, sometimes it, you know, it can look naff. The fact that it's this real thing there in front of you, tangible, for me, that's like always going to be better, you yeah. know? Like, even if, it looks, even if you know it's really fake. Like I watched um, the thing the other day for the first time the with um, John Kurt Hunt. Russell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was amazing. It was so good. Like, and you know it's you know it's like not real, obviously, but yeah. the fact that it's practical special effects is it just it, I don't know. It just makes it so much better, so much more tense. I feel like practical special effects for horror. Yeah, dude, it does something to me. Like when you watch CGI, can go and do one. Because yeah, <laughs> it can do one. CGI <laughs> for horror kills it because it just yeah. it just shows you. Uh, I mean, or so, explosions and shit. You know, yeah, like explosions don't look as good. No, but um, but the Hulk looks good. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo looks good. Yeah, that, that's, that's a, <laughs> at that's times. Di- that's di- yeah, that's, that's kind of it's different. But I mean, yeah, the, the Hulk the, versus Thanos. That, that that was all CG. The I background, mean, the characters, <laughs> literally the weapons. Yeah, but it still looked crazy good. They looked great. Thanos looked great. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, CGI is it getting worse? Maybe CGI twenty years ago. What was that like? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> but yeah, ten but, years ago, really good. I mean, like, look at Avatar. That's oh. like, there's some shots which just look insane and i've seen films nowadays which look worse than that and that, that came out in 2009 yeah but i think it's maybe it's just a timing thing isn't it? it's like um they maybe they just i don't know i don't know what it is it's like 
I guess some people are better at it than others, you know, mm. or maybe like this budget is time scale. But I do, I do enjoy a bit of, I do enjoy a good CGI, you know, a nice bit of CGI. Like I thought, you know, recently Avengers Endgame, like or Infinity War, like Thanos looked epic. He looked, he well, he's he the looked main, amazing. He's the main character in um, yeah in the first film. It is the the Thanos film, so yeah, I think yeah, it's, uh, like yeah. the level of detail was insane. It was, uh, I think it was, a, yeah, it was a bit of a triumph to kind of. I never was thinking to myself, he's a CGI character. I was never thinking to myself. Yeah, I believed it. I was he was made in a studio. Yeah, the way he interacted with the characters and stuff is. Uh, I believed it. It's fantastic. I was in it. <laughs> I live in it. <laughs> I saw it twice in the cinema. Or Infinity War or Infinity War, yeah. I need to see it Endgame again, actually. I I want to see it again. It's good. You've seen it twice. I have. Don't at me. Nah, mate. <laughs> I need to see it again. Moving on to CGI. Well, it's going back slightly uh, to what yeah, CGI was of, like um, yeah. 20 years ago. Uh, 20 years ago was The the Matrix. 20th, no anniversary, 20th anniversary. 1999. Shit. Feels so long ago. <laughs> mate, I was... Six. I was nine. You were nine. I probably, I didn't see it when it came out, but I did see I it. I saw that maybe film. Maybe I was 11. Way too young. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I saw films like I shouldn't have been watching when I was really young. I don't, I don't know. My mum didn't know. Like I saw Robocop. Oof. That's one of my earliest memories when I was probably five, maybe four. I went to my grandma's, Gloucester. Boot sale, <laughs> video, VHS, VHS. I thought, oh, Power Ranger. You know, he looks like a Power Ranger or something. He looks cool. Like. Mm. And then I was like, Grandma, Grandma. She bought me it. Bless her heart. Watched it. Traumatized. Traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> the scene with the fucking robot. He just absolutely Where it makes, like malfunctions and just makes mincemeat of that guy. He turns him into Swiss cheddar. <laughs> the acid scene. I think I fast forwarded oh, it. Oh my maybe. god! And yes. then the next thing I saw was the scene where the guy is like covered in acid and he's like melting. Anyway, I turned it off. What is that film? It's so good. <laughs> it's so I good. This is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about people getting absolutely gunned down and burning mutilated. Acid. Yeah. The eighties were a hell of a place. Hell of a film though. Yeah, it's great. I came back to it eventually, you know. Once the uh, once I dealt with the trauma, mm. the sleepless nights, I came back to it, and I love Robocop one. Don't know why I'm so talking good. about Robocop. Yeah. What but, were we talking uh, about? Before? We were talking about the Matrix. The Matrix. We were talking about the Matrix. How Matrix. how did it change? How did it change films uh, in both sci-fi and action genre? Because it never been done before. Um, it was a very out there concept. I think. I think. <laughs> For the I mean, time. They, yeah, and they had to actually create technology in order to bullet time. Yeah, bullet time was a new, that had never been done. That was a new thing. That was something that the Wachowskis developed with the I, I don't know. I want to say Panasonic. I have no that's, idea that's really what actually what I'm on about, Sorry. but I know that it was a new technology at the time. Yeah. You know, it hadn't been multiple done. high speed cameras. Yeah, yeah, shooting like, at the same time. 360 yeah. degrees you've seen the you, you see the picture of, yeah uh, you know the shots that they're getting the one with neo and then the one with uh, trinity as well mate um the setup the rig iconic yeah it was crazy good isn't it um one thing about that film iconic like if i had to say i mean that's that age-old question it's like what's your favorite film you know if i had to say one film it would be the matrix yeah i love that fucking film so much it's, um, I feel like I learn something new every time I watch it as well. It's very that's, layered. That's, that's probably the mark of a great film. I yeah. Guess. You know, you can go to go to it multiple times. Well, I saw it as a kid, you know, so many times. And then you watch it yeah. when you're an adult and it's it means something slightly different, you know? Is it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, weird, it's a weird thing when you, especially if you, ha if you have a large gap between yeah. seeing something as a, maybe a 10... 12 year yeah. old and then coming back when you're like 25 yeah I saw it my brother I remember my older brother Mike he um, 
we were in the car and he was like, oh, I've got this new film. And he like showed me this film. It was on VHS. It was like a special edition. It came, I've still got, I've still got it. I don't know if it's the one that Mike got. Yeah. Cause I'm a nerd and I saw it in a charity shop, the special edition <laughs> box VHS. Brilliant. Came in this really nice box. I've got two of them. Who doesn't like a good sleeve oh, or man. a good box for a VHS? Yeah. And, um, he was like, yeah, it's called the matrix. And they, there's like fighting and there's one scene where they're inside a wall and they slide down a wall and I'm like, cool. <laughs> they slide down a wall. I'm like, no idea what he's on about. Yes. I just sounded That's cool. a very bad description <laughs> of the Matrix, I mean, but it's fantastic. Six, bro. Yeah. You know, I was like probably six or seven when I saw it. And that film is heavy for a six or seven year old oh, to God, watch. Yeah. It's dark. Especially when he goes into the real world. Yeah, but... Before you know that, I mean? when it's all he's about getting interroga- interrogated, and his mouth closes gets, up, gets glooped shut, gloop, just fine. And the bug in the belly button, like oh, they're, they're probably two horrific. of everyone's worst nightmares. Surely we've all had those dreams. Something going inside your belly button. Something. <laughs> I mean, I mean, after watching The Matrix as a six-year-old, probably yeah, probably a recurring. Yeah, that's what dream. I'm saying. I think I did fuck myself up a little bit i'm okay though i'm okay now i think they're just kind of luckily i didn't you know not didn't go not, the i want to say they're a rite of passage but it's it's more like you have to see them eventually you, you yeah i mean you know, I, I think it's very um don't want to don't, wanna I shy don't know what kids it. are watching these days like no. i don't know like literally just billy Anish. it's terrible though because but is it i don't know because i'm all right i think i'm okay you mm. know what do you think? I'd say you're well adjusted. If <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm too fucked up. Like, but I was talking about this with my friend um, the other day and we were like, I don't know, man, I, I'm going to admit this now, but like we were, you know, we were swearing like at a really young age. Yeah. It's terrible. And I was watching films like, you know, that were for adults, but I seem to be okay. But I don't know that these days you can sort of, everything's very, um, you know, everyone's been very careful, but mm. which is great, like in some respects. But you know, has the Matrix allowed a certain different type of action and sci-fi film? Yeah, I think so. Um, did it open? Did it open doors? Yeah, for sure. I think. I just think like the action was. Like, I mean, it's Kung Fu, it's like, you know, it's been done before, but you I don't feel like you'd seen it in Hollywood like that. You I know? feel yeah, I feel like the the Matrix was such a mix of styles. Yeah. That it allowed and it did so well critically that it allowed that option. Mm. You know, like you're it was thinking a bit of a Star Wars moment, really. I no feel, one was yeah. expecting Yeah. I feel like it you're to do well. Yes, you are looking at a Kung Fu movie. Mm a sci-fi film and literally a run and gun action film all at once and with a good story yeah and it's hella philosophical as well yeah it's yeah it would and it's, it's also it's very deep it's also you know it's borrowed heavily from the terminator you know it's like it's all it's about a machines possibility. over it's like, a possibility you yeah. know who knows you know the way um technology's going ai like it could happen shit could happen and then I can become the one yeah and I can fucking dodge bullets and, you know it's girl definitely. in the red dress and <laughs> I'll meet Morpheus and it'll be great and yeah so you're looking you're looking for a Matrix reboot <laughs> yeah <laughs> Matrix reboot this, um... and I'm also uh, I'm in the minority of people who actually dig the sequels Reloaded Revolution oh, like, yeah Come at me, bro. I like I like Reloaded. Not as much. Reloaded as, sick. Not as much as original. And then no, the original once, as a once again film is phenomenal. I don't like Revelation. <laughs> I, I, think like Revelation. I think there's an S on there. That's that's my least favorite, but I like it. Hmm. But it's also it's hard. It, it's the, like it's the conclusion. You know, it's like it's pretty dark. It's pretty yeah. depressing. It's not. You know, again, it's. I think it's what the end of the trilogy kind of needed 
Yeah, I, I mean, don't, I don't you think do, it you should don't want, like, all be a... sunshine and rainbows. No, like, no, that would be very unmatrix. No, no, not at all. It's like, yeah, it's a bit more realistic. But, but reloaded, knows, like reloaded, reloaded, sick, reloaded. I waited years for that. Well, the car chase. How long? Would that... that was like four years between. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, one and. Two thousand three. Two thousand three. Yeah. Um. I love the Matrix, man. I wonder if they'll ever do a new one. There is actually talk of them doing a fourth one now. Yeah. Literally. It's been talked for a while, though. For years. But this is the first time there's been concrete evidence. I think it was the director oh, really? of John Wick. As, oh, really? Has Stad- already st- said... No, Chad... Was his name? St- no. Chad Stahelski or something like that. I don't know. The director of John Wick 3 yeah. has said that, you know, categorically, they are working on the... Both of the brothers are working. The Wachowski Wuk- 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 brothers are working on the fourth one. I don't know that. Are they information they're... filtering through Keanu Reeves? I'm hoping. I don't know if they're brothers anymore. I think they're both. I think they're sisters now. The, the Wachowskis. Ooh. Yes. They, yeah, I think that. Yeah. I think that they actually. Um, I think they had a sex change. I don't know. I'm and not sure. Not I haven't one heard entity. From... Did they both have one? Or they both had one. One. One, oh, uh, one. I can't remember which one first, but. And then, yeah, they both did this it. This is a startling revelation for me because I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> They're not the Wachowski no, brothers anymore. No, um, the Wachowskis. I don't know. Um, the Wachowskis and friends? The Wachowskis. We'll go with that. Yeah, fair play. I don't know what their last film was or series. Cloud Atlas. Didn't do... I saw it. It was shit. It was fucking It was bad. fucking shit. <laughs> with uh, Channing Tatum. Yeah. No, me, um, Mila Kunis. No, Cloud Atlas. Uh, oh no, what am I thinking of? Oh, Jupiter Ascending. Jupiter Ascending. Jupiter Ascending. Again, these those two films fall Jupiter. into fall into the category of a ton of CGI on a terrible yeah. story. Yeah, Jupiter Ascending. I, was, I nearly walked out. Did you? I was so bored. And look, anyone that knows me, I love a shit action film. Hmm. But this was too far. This was one step too far. I don't it know what it was stop. about it. Well, I do know. It was just shit. Yeah. It was boring. It was contrived. But anyway, that film came out fucking years ago, so who cares? Mm. But but it had Tom Hanks in it, the Cloud Atlas. Oh, no, you were talking about Jupiter. Oh, so yeah, Cloud Atlas. Cloud I Atlas. I know the one. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. I watched. Yeah, I watched. I have watched it. I do not remember. There's some American anything. guy playing an Asian in it, I think. Ooh, that's no? A, that's dodgy ground, isn't it? I mean, get an Asian guy to play the part. I don't know. One hundred percent. Why not? Did it, or maybe actually, like I haven't seen it. Maybe there was a reason why. Because it's all about. What's it about? <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's about. It's I'm about two, on it. It's about two people who are connected through time and space, like infinitely. Whoa, I whoa. don't. Know. Again, a very, a very deep diving philosophical film that was kind of ruined by. A Is it about script. ancestors? Am I right Something in saying that? Something similar, yeah. But I feel like I all know. would be forgiven if uh, you know we get Matrix Four. Yeah, a but continuation. It, it's dangerous, though. It's it dangerous. Is very dangerous. It's, it's too much it, to live up to. It could be too much fan service. Don't make it for the sake of making it for the sake of money, hmm. which I don't think they would. But no. like, seeing as they only make a few films. I don't what know, would only it make be a about? Couple of films in a decade. Would it, what would it be about? It would have to be uh, Neo's I'd legacy. It, I want it to be so good. Neo's legacy. I just don't know if it would be good. It feels like every single post on my social media these days is just memes <laughs> it's just memes yeah man that's they, um they have taken over the world i think or taken over forms of normal communication yeah i just Who doesn't sent, like I just sent a meme <laughs> <laughs> a second ago <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh so they do they do crack me up though i mean memes have taken over the world but we let it yeah yeah. Memes have taken over the board. But, um, um, but that's what, what Facebook's kind of become. The, a meme, the hub of memes. Um, and other crap. 
Will we be able to communicate without memes in the future? <laughs> <laughs> These I are hard hitting topics, man. No, I think they're. Um, I think they're great, personally. Yeah, a good I, meme, me too. A good meme is like. You know, sometimes makes just, you what, just what you need. Yeah, just, yeah, they're genuine, yeah. Just how have they changed over 10 years? When did they Maybe become a thing? Th- when did they When did they become a thing? Can we pinpoint the explosion of meme culture? Um, I don't know, like, maybe like four years ago? What do you think? I thought maybe 2012, 2013. Yeah, probably around that time. They were they were a thing before, weren't they? But of they course. just didn't have a name. Yeah. They, well, they, think, they were memes. in the dictionary now. It is, yeah. I think memes been around for a long time. Yeah. Obviously not as prevalent as it is now. Yeah, like but there's just not been it, it hasn't it, it wasn't named a meme. It no, didn't no. Have a name. But I feel like it just it just took over what it means to be funny online you know like what you know there's so many so many avenues for me i'm just laughing thinking of something yeah (laughs) see like they are good they are great but that like i that's like one of my number one fears (laughs) what is (laughs) what is of becoming a meme oh no but a bad one oh yeah a bad one yeah well mind you who really gives a shit yeah true but I um, well the um, I had it the other day, like I had smoked a joint and I was a bit high, and I was walking home, and I think I was listening to music or I was just like, oh man, I was just really high yeah. and I had my mouth open, <laughs> <laughs> and oh I just looked God. gormless and I was like, oh, in no. my own world walking home. And then the paranoia kicks in. Yeah. And this car drove past. <laughs> and it, it was this group of girls. Oh, no. And I kind of like... This is like from a film. Have you not told I, me yeah, about it? As I've looked... I thought I did. As I've looked, <clears throat> the mouth hasn't moved. It's still wide open. It's like, you know, like I looked like the biggest dope. And I turn and it was three girls and they were all laughing. And one of them had a camera and it looked like she was filming me. Oh my God. But this is like, this, you know, this is the paranoia getting in. Yeah. And I um, I thought literally for the next 10 minutes until I got home that I was going to see myself as a (laughs) man. I was going to load up Instagram. The internet works that fast. You know, literally. And in my head, I had, you know, made up like I was going to see myself and it was going to be like, you know, as I'm walking, they zoom in and as they're zooming in, it worked perfectly with me turning my head and like my, <laughs> just my mouth wide open and, you know, oh my my God, shop, I had amazing. shopping in my hand as well. I didn't look cool. <laughs> <laughs> shopping. I love it. I, didn't I look, love this I didn't story. look cool. Um, but yeah, I was totally it does paranoid. work that far. So, so you it know, yeah, have you heard of the the Tim and Eric show? No, Tim and Eric show. No, I yeah, that's know. A, uh, so it's an American. Um, it's an American show, and the creators they have multiple famous memes about themselves. Right. Like the one of them is the the head explode like blows my mind meme. You know, it's like you know yeah that thing where it's like the universe and like explosions and stuff. That's like probably their most famous meme. Um, did I send you that Casey what's his name Casey Nysat Nysat which one the was YouTuber that one? where he folds the phone and then the Avengers theme kicks in <laughs> no he's like you fold the phone and then it's the width of two phones <laughs> and then the Avengers theme kicks in it's fucking hilarious you have to watch it uh, see it's, it's, it, it's such a it's such a source for, of humour it's like a source of comedy of itself which is is you know, is is a weird one because it's like it's just it's just small little thoughts. It's not like a it's not like a, a comedian what doing started a, it. Vine. Oh, I mean, I don't think started it, but definitely exacerbated the situation. Yeah, because I feel Vi- like they, I feel like I don't know what was Vine because Vine. on Vine, all of the 
No, it wasn't really memes, was it? Was well, more like funny videos, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. All well, m- like a lot of the very, very popular vines just became memes. Yeah. Like just that's how they yeah, transition. Like stick, it sticks a caption over. Yeah. It. But um, yeah, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a source of comedy, but it's like a weird source of comedy. I don't really know, you know, anything else because it a good meme is something that you can kind of relate. I feel like they're like yeah, those ones. That's why they're that, yeah, they are. They're are so prevalent. relatable. They're, they're, they're they, there all the time. They're things that you're you've thought of, but just mm. didn't know how to express. And so when you see one that you can relate to so perfectly, then yeah. it just makes it that much more. It just brilliant. it just it literally does just fucking tickle you straight away. <laughs> yeah. Um. I might it might sound like I'm complaining about memes being everywhere, but you know. Thank God for them. But <laughs> literally, they, they, you know, it's, it's, it, it also like, it's a social thing. You know, you send them to, like, you might send them to people. Yeah. I, f- I feel like it's I a send good about, icebreaker. Oh, of course it is. It's if a you're great, on the church. It's, it's a great icebreaker. If you're, you know. Send a perfect gif, not a gift. Oh, <laughs> not a send gift, a no. perfect gif. That's it. You're, you're, yeah. you know, you're gold. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, who's that guy that's stealing memes? Oh, uh, or taking credit for them? Fuck Jerry. That's it. Mm. He's making thousands. Featured. How? They they, they made. They pro- did they produce or they made that fire festival documentary? Who did? Those fuck, guys. fuck Jerry. Yeah. They made it and they're that's in it. it. No way. Yeah. They did the just uh, like they did the promo forces, aren't they? Or he is? They, yeah, they're pretty much. Yeah, they pretty just much steal forces. people's content mm. and take credit for it. And oh he's yeah, he's making like tens of thousands of dollars. Oh know. yeah, he has a company. You it's literally insane. have a company on the back of theft of yeah. content. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Crazy. somehow he's got around. How it. do you? You can't fucking claim to be the founder of memes. Is that no. what he claims to be? No, 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 no. I don't think so. I think he actually. I think he does. Maybe he's got. He like claims an that ego. <laughs> he claims to like a complex. Have created. I don't know memes. memes you can't know because memes have been around since the early internet. They have to have been funny. Pictures are literally memes. The guys are dick so, anyway. Yeah. I've seen him. Yeah, it, not in person. <laughs> have you have you, have you seen the fire uh, fire festival documentary? No. Well, I've heard lots of things about it. I'm not. So it's the, terrible, it's, it? Yeah, it have you seen out. this, Bill? No. Have you? Seen <laughs> it? No. Yeah. Do you like? Do you, do you like things, Bill? Do you <laughs> I like do content, like things, Bill? Yeah. Well, if you like any content, it's probably been stolen by Fuck Jerry. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I just, I just don't know how. Oh, I do know how because again, it's social and it's funny. Yeah. But I don't know how it's become this big that there are literally hundreds if not millions hundreds of thousands if not millions of meme pages yeah on just facebook or reddit alone and i'm <laughs> it's it's an it's an insurmountable amount of content mm. that people find funny that yeah. it's it's just I, it's it's easy to kind of make there's certain formats which are like you know they're just easy to kind of make what are your thoughts on um like social media facebook start with facebook you have facebook yeah 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 i got facebook um i don't have it i have it i deactivated it yeah i can't for the best or yeah or do you miss it no not at all no i don't like, that sounds so sad <laughs> do I you know, miss facebook <laughs> i am um, no no but i know what you mean i know what you're saying like i have instagram yeah so i am on social media but that's mm. the only platform i'm on yeah um but facebook i don't know what it was it what it is about facebook that i just it just depresses me like even i don't know like it was people's statuses do people still put status i feel Has like that died out well like i've said I've, i'm seeing so many memes that i feel like the statuses are just kind of getting lost like i might yeah. see one or two yeah but even if more it's people... People's, it's people's politics and mm. opinions. And What's worse, a status or a tweet? Mm. I don't know. Do you know what? 
a status for me because of the word. Yeah. It's the word status. You know, they don't really. It's not. It's not really called that anymore. It's how out of touch I am. I haven't used it. Oh, I guess it's just a post. It says, "What's on your mind?" Yeah, Yeah, it's just a post. It's a post now. now. When it when it's a status, you know, and you're writing things, probably some of them are quite personal as well. Yeah, it's like that's your status. I don't know. It's like your current mindset. Even when people are being honest, I don't know. I. I, I've been guilty of it in the past. Oh, of course, yeah, we were. Lame. Oh, God. Oh, I dread, I, I dread to think, like, I should probably delete the fucking uh, Yeah. <laughs> so I've just used my phone just delete to delete all anything evidence. past 2016. Yeah, but... <laughs> People do that, though. I just... I don't know. I just... I can't bear it. I don't... I don't care. I don't want to know. No? Well, I'm some, trying to... Some... I mean, it's not fair. Maybe some are... Yeah. You know actually people have something to say and it's like it's nice but I don't know there's just it's just so filled with crap now that I had to just get rid of it thanks very much Bill I've just created a page for the book that's fine <laughs> but I will I will obviously be there for you know Japanese but heat wave I feel Instagram I feel like, face, well. I feel like Facebook is over. over Facebook's over I think yeah but they own Instagram don't they so they're <sighs> Yeah, that, I mean, their, the Facebook, the Facebook group, you know, like as a company, yeah. I don't think will ever, ever be, you know. I think it's more over. Yeah, do you think I it's feel fair like to platforms say- will collapse under migration? Maybe. Mm. I, 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 Facebook is kind of always going to be there. It was. Is that? It's now maybe for the slightly older generation. Do you think? Maybe. Um, you know, I, I feel like there's been an increase in, but it's, it's because I feel like people who are, you know, younger are always willing to jump platforms. Mm. And then there's going to be, there's going to be, I really think certain generations that are like, okay, I only use Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Don't use Facebook. Don't use Snapchat. Um, but then you know new platforms will come and the younger generation and it will literally just be I feel like whatever's the most accessible will always be there so that's probably Facebook but then the the ones that have come in during a certain generation yeah I feel like that stuff will stick when that generation reaches a certain age yeah so it will literally be like just for example people who are maybe in their 40s and 50s in the next couple of like in the next 10 20 years they will stick to twitter and instagram yeah and then and then you know something new will obviously eventually come along and then you know it will just it will just shift as the years go by yeah. as the generations go on it will just be shifting Instagram's and it's just it's just whether one, they man. stay up as well you yeah. know it's so all whether the, these companies stay afloat. Like, yeah. Obviously, Instagram, Facebook is again, not going anywhere. Funny one. Like, I feel like Instagram makes you feel, well, makes me feel sometimes insecure. Yeah. Because I'm like, you know, it's like talked about all the time, but I don't know. It makes people feel shit. You know, like everyone's having such a great time and, yeah, you know, you feel like if you don't have that, then, you know, your life sucks or whatever, but it's not real, is it? It's not, it's all just a highlight reel sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely... It's how you look at it. I don't know, but I just think... With Instagram, they feel, you know. can, you're able to filter out the, the, the negative. Yeah. You, or I the, mean, or I the mundane. I don't Instagram a massive amount, but, uh-huh. you know, I like... I think the most I've done is because of this podcast. Yeah. In the, you know, shortest amount of time. Because I literally would go four yeah. months without doing anything. Yeah. It's good for business, like... Oh, yeah. But then you've got all these influ- influencers and you're like... What do you I do? I mean, fair enough. You know, like, good, <laughs> good for them, really. Yeah, I, guess, I mean... You know, they're, they're making money. They're if I was their in their position, I'd be doing the same thing. I just think it's, like... Possibly. Damaging, in a way. Hmm. You know? Certain influencers, definitely. Certain, certain ones, yeah. Um, but then who the fuck am I? Really and, then, and, then, and then you're like, well, 
do, like are, like you're think I'm not thinking of the influencers. I'm thinking of those who are being influenced. Mm. Like, why are they being able to be influenced? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, influencers can do what they do, but why are people like just you know are they just grazing in a field ready to be herded somewhere? Mm. Like, I don't feel like I'm being influenced myself by who I follow on Instagram. No. So maybe no, you no, need no, to no, kind no. of look at, you know, no way. What's what's going on in your life that someone well, is influencing call- yeah. you to buy products. <laughs> yeah. I know it's it's kind of good for business. It is great for business. You know, like someone's got a good product, you know, they give it to someone and then other people buy that good product, but that that's that's in the perfect world. I don't think, you know, cuz there's a lot of crap out there. <laughs> Yeah, no. the influencers are pushing, and then I'm just thinking to myself, are you that person who's being influenced by this, by this post that might not necessarily be a good thing? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking. I just wonder what um, that's become it does a thing to younger people. Like, yeah. I'm glad that this shit didn't really exist when I was at school. You know? Yeah, oh yeah, hundred like, percent. We had MSN and shit. Like that was that was the thing. All you're influencing then is to be right back. Yeah, but like, I wonder... Uh, G to G. I wonder uh, if it has a effect on teenagers. Well, it does, doesn't it? Like, Have we reached a point where we can try and look at long-term effects mm. of social media? It's been about... Yeah. It's been... Well, I've been on Facebook. I've been on Facebook for... I have I to take say a 12 break years. from it sometimes, you know? I have to, like... It's take probably, a it's probably of, best. A little bit of a social media break because I just get sick of it I get sick of everyone <laughs> <laughs> and myself What's, as well what so I don't want to really end on a, like a really sour note but what no. is the best thing about social media the best thing about social media um, at ooh. its current point you know at its, in its current iteration what's the I best say, thing about social media I would say like for me, like, kind of, you know, I'm in a band with my friend and my brother and we're, you know, we really want to kind of pursue that. It's such a great way of sharing your music. Yeah. You know, it's like instantaneous. Oh, oh of course. It literally you, could reach anyone in the world. Yeah, you never know who's going to see your stuff. And also, you know, I, I think of my Instagram as almost like a CV, like because you know i do a bit of acting and a bit of music or whatever and it's like like you know you never know you never know who's going to see it and of you course want it. so you can post stuff which um can get you work you never know or Oof. you know you might producer might get in touch or you know you could build up a following and then you could put on a show like and you know do well you know just off your own back um so for me it's like the fact that you can share music i guess mm. and your what you're doing and but so it is great for business it is. it's uh it's a great way to just to broadcast either yourself or just just communicate with you know yeah it's, oh, it's it's great for communication if you're if you're not um you know if you're miles away from someone you still want to yeah, talk no. to like it doesn't cost you anything to message on facebook I know you still yeah. want WhatsApp and stuff like that, but, and, you know. And you kind of, you're in the loop and you're sort of seeing what your friends are up to and that's always good. But I think sometimes, like, we all need to be a bit more real, you know, mm-hmm. and honest. Yeah. Because it's not like, you know, it's not as, it's not always perfect, which is what Instagram kind of paints a picture of, which I think isn't, you know, the best thing at times true but you know there are a lot of good things about it for sure definitely like Japanese Heat Wave podcast <laughs> dude so yeah we'll have to do this again follow us on Facebook Instagram and soon to be YouTube this Ooh. was episode one ah YouTube yeah ah, <laughs> ah okay. YouTube all social media platforms all dead Japanese Heat Wave yeah boy yeah